Welcome to English 203, Introductory English Morphology and Syntax. Study Session 1, Basic Concept and Approaches. Introduction. In this introductory lecture, you will learn some basic terms and concepts that will facilitate your understanding of morphology, that is, word structure and syntax, sentence structure in the English language. This course embraces two components of language study that are embodied in grammar. The lecture also includes a brief overview of different approaches to study of grammar. Objectives. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand some basic terms like grammar, word, morphology, syntax, and what they stand for. Two, recognize the relationship between word and grammar. And three, recognize the different uses of the term grammar. Pretest. How can you define the term grammar? Why do you think grammar is important in language study? Name other aspects of language study that you know. Rearrange the following strings of words to make a meaningful sentence. This book Saturday on John Mary gave to. What have you learned from this exercise in relation to sentence construction in English? Content, word and grammar, their relationships. Word and grammar are related to each other in a number of ways. Firstly, words constitute the building blocks for constructing sentences. Secondly, words are expected to come in a given order in a grammatical structure, like the phrase, clause, or sentence. Thirdly, the occurrence of certain words in a particular sentence may lead to bad grammar. Fourthly, there is a varying degree of grammaticality of the sentence. This depends on the nature of words used. The study of words is therefore central to the understanding of a language works. You will discover that some of the problems of constructing sentences derive partly from inadequate knowledge of how words behave in a language. A particular word has its meaning, but its grammatical function is determined by how it is used in a sentence. Many words in the English language have more than one meaning and often have different meanings. Which meaning a word carries in a given sentence depends on the sentence in which it occurs, on its relationship to other words in that sentence. The examples below indicate different meanings for the word house. A. The driver went to his house. B. The president went to the White House. C. The House of Representatives is on vacation. In the sentences A and B above, the word house has two different senses of dwelling. House in sentence C is completely different from A and B, meaning a special group of people rather than a dwelling. What is grammar? The term grammar is often used by different people to mean different things. First, grammar can be considered to be a branch of language study which deals with the construction of sentences which are intelligibly and acceptable. Secondly, grammar may be used to refer to the quality of the knowledge of a language possessed by a speaker as inferred from the nature of what he speaks. On the basis of this, we can judge the grammar of the speaker of the utterances below as poor. The girl's is here. The woman is expected to be seated. Thirdly, grammar has been defined as a finite set of rules which 
enumerates, generates an infinite number of grammatical or well-formed sentences of a language and no on grammatical ones and assigns to each sentence generated its proper structural description. Kotsudas, 1966, 4. From this last definition, grammar is seen to be rule governed. Thus, a sentence like, this is a house, is grammatical, whereas this are a house is not. There is a set of rules which govern how units of a language may be combined to form acceptable sentences. Knowledge of grammar ensures appropriate usage in language. A learner who has mastered the grammar of a language is one who has mastered and can apply its rules in an acceptable way. Word order. A. When I entered the house, a big dog ran out and barked at me. B. House I the when entered, barked, ran out big A and a dog me. These are two strings of words. The same words but in different order. Anyone who knows English will see at once that the first string of words makes sense, whereas the second is a meaningless list of words. What makes the difference is grammar. The first string is grammatical. The words are placed in the patterns that belong to the grammar of English. The second string is not so much ungrammatical as totally lacking in grammar. It is a random collection of words placed in random order. Sentences are not simply random words strung together. Word order is an essential feature of the grammar of every language. The fact that English sentences can be of the type, Femi goes to school, and not school to Femi goes, reveals that words, even when some can concur, habitually or collocate, can not be put together in just any order. The total meaning of a sentence may depend in part simply on word order, as in the English pair of sentences. The dog killed the snake, and the snake killed the dog. Different approaches to grammar. A. Traditional grammar refers to the type of grammar before the 20th century. Based on Latin grammar, Traditional grammar was conceived as a universal standard for the study of other human languages. For example, English. This approach to grammar has been criticized by modern scholars for various reasons will be examined later. B. Diachronic grammar. A record of statements on the historical development of a language through a particular period of time. Example the grammar of English written to cover a specific period of time. Example, Old English to Middle. C. Synchronic grammar. Contrasts with diachronic grammar. It studies the structure of a language at a particular point. It is usually descriptive. D. Contrastive and comparative grammar makes systematic comparisons and statements about the structure of two different languages in order to show the areas where the two structures are similar and where they are different. E. Pedagogical grammar, usually written for the main purpose of teaching language skills and usages that are considered elegant in that language. Thus, Pedagogical teaching grammars are designed purposely for teaching or learning a language. Characteristically, pedagogical grammars have lots of prescriptive statements about what should be used and what should not. G. Universal grammar. Another more recent type is universal grammar. It involves investigations which go beyond the study of individual languages. 
its focus is to attempt to establish the universal characteristics that define human language in general. It studies the universal properties of language and how these are expressed in particular languages. F. Descriptive grammar. This is a modern linguistic approach concerned with the description of units of language structure and the rules which state how language elements may or may not be combined. For the language scholar, grammar embraces morphology, word formation, and syntax, combination of structures larger than words, for example, phrases and clauses and the rules underlying their constructions. The descriptive approach of the modern linguist opposes the prescriptive emphasis of the traditional grammarian. This course is concerned with descriptive grammar, which embraces morphology and syntax. What is morphology? Morphology is one of the dimensions of grammar and is concerned with the formation of words and their structural properties. There are two main dimensions in the study of morphology. A, inflectional morphology, and B, derivational morphology. For further discussions, see lectures three, four, and five. What is syntax? Syntax is the second dimension of grammar. Syntax or syntactic analysis is concerned with the study of the ways in which words are put together to form sentences and the principles underlying them. Words are assembled into phrases and phrases are put together to form sentences. For example, the noun phrases, this shirt and the verb phrase is very nice, may be put together to form the sentence, this shirt is very nice. In syntax, the component parts of a sentence are determined. Then the parts are described grammatically. Syntax embraces the two related tasks of A, breaking down the sentences into its constituents, and B, assigning grammatical labels to each constituent stating what type of constituent or grammatical category it is and what grammatical function it performs. Grammatical units. There are five grammatical units which are hierarchically organized as follows. Sentence, clause, group, word, morpheme. The sentence is the highest category while the morpheme is the lowest or smallest. For more discussion of this, go to lecture two. Post-test. One, explain the terms one, morphology, syntax, grammar, and structure. Two, in your own words, try to give some idea of word order in English. Study session summary. This introductory lecture provides the background to the basic concepts for understanding word structure in a language grammar embraces word structure, morphology, and sentence structure, syntax. Morphology is thus concerned with the formation of words and their structural properties, while syntax deals with the way words and phrases are joined together to form sentences. There are five major units that carry grammatical patterns. These are sentence, clause, phrase, or group. Word and morpheme, these display a kind of arrangement that is hierarchical. End of study session one. Thank you for listening. <laughs>